more minutes of your time. I won't be long. And man, that was an awesome, uh, awesome concert. Great music. Wonderful testimonies. Awesome skin. If I can just have a couple more minutes. Uh, October 18th of 2018, which is this year, uh, marked one year that my youngest son had cranial surgery. Um, he was diagnosed with that. Um, he was diagnosed at a young age. The doctors were saying that uh, his plates and his head had fused together and that throughout his beginning stages of life, a couple months, that if his plates didn't separate, they were going to have to have surgery. So leading up to the surgery prior to that, I had, uh, I had been praying, God, heal my son. I don't want him to have to have the surgery. I just, I just need a miracle, God. And we, we would go to the visits, and doctors would still keep saying that he needed to have a surgery. The plates aren't, aren't coming apart. And begin to pray again. God heal him. Long story short, I want to say after six months, they confirmed that he had uh, sagittal uh, synostosis, which means he had to have the surgery done to separate the plates that in his head uh, that had fused. So I took it upon myself. I was like, you know what? Let me just watch a video to see what they have to do. I YouTubed it, and that was probably the wrong decision to do. After watching the video, I, I told my wife, I was like, you know what? We're not going to go through with this surgery. And she was like, well, the doctor said that we have to. And I was, I was just upset. I was like, no, I don't want them to have to perform this procedure on my son. I'm, I'm not going to allow it to happen. Uh, we went in for a one of his last visits, and the, the surgeon asked if we had any questions, and I told the surgeon, I was like, if, uh, if we're going to go through with the surgery, I want to be in the room with him. He was like, unfortunately, we can't, we can't allow that. Uh, we need just the people who are working on your son to be in the room, and I was like, well, I don't know if I want to go through with the surgery then, and he gave us time to think about it. Um, after talking it over, I talked to Pastor, and Pastor was like, you know what, just just believe God. God is gonna. God is gonna heal him. He's gonna be okay. We went again, and uh, I told, I told the surgeon. I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just get it done. They set the appointment for October 18th, um, and in one of the last visits, the surgeon mentioned something that really caught my attention. He said it wasn't his choice that he was born with this, but the choice that we have as parents is to let, let us go. Let us have the surgery so that way later on in life it doesn't affect him and by affecting him if his plates were fused at a young age later on in life his brain wasn't going to be able to grow so I was like all right let's do it let's let's get it taken care of I want what's best for my son um, after the surgery we're, we're sitting in there in, in the hospital and one of the things that, that really stuck with me is the fact that the doctor was like it's it's something that he need, that, that we need to do for him to live a better life later on down the road. And as I begin to think about that, it popped, it popped up in my head that we're all, we're all born with something in our life that we have no control. As, as far as being, being born, we're born into a world of, with something that we have to allow God to begin to change our lives. If not later on down the road, it's going to affect our lives. And we're all born into a world of sin. The Bible says in Romans 5.12, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death and thus death spread to all men because all sin. And as I begin to think about that, it was a it was a perfect example of our lives. Like I said, we're born into a world of sin, not by choice, but the choice that we do have is to turn away from our sin. The, the choice that we have to make on a daily basis is to serve God. We have to, com on a daily basis, like I said, confess our sins. We're natural born sinners. And if we want to make heaven our home, we have to turn away from our sins. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And I, I experience the love and the joy of being saved four years ago when I bowed my knee and I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. And just like my, my son's situation, it was something that he was born with, but we had a choice to make so that way he can live a better life. And you're faced with a choice tonight if you're not saved. 
whether or not you want to turn away from your sin and begin to let God reconstruct some things in your life so that way you can live a better life. Amen. Man, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you can live, live happily. You can live a joyful life. It's not going to be the easy way out. There's definitely going to be some ups and downs while serving God, but you have a peace and you have a joy in your mind knowing that God is in control of everything. And regardless of what your circumstances are, God will guide you through it. God, God will help you and God, God will begin to direct your footsteps and put you on a path and a plan that is destined for you that he had for you before you were even born. Man, if you're, if you're out there and we want to extend that invitation to you, we want to give you an opportunity tonight to accept Jesus you're in this place. If I can have every head bowed and every eye closed, I'll just take a couple more minutes.